Savior Jesus Christ, God's grace, mercy, and peace are with all of you. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ our Savior, the well-known evangelist C.H. Spurgeon one day was walking through the English countryside with a friend. As they were walking along, he happened to notice a, a weather vane that had been, been placed on top of one of the barns. The very top of that weather vane was the phrase, God is love. Spurgeon remarked to his friend how he felt that was really an inappropriate place to put that kind of a message. He said, weather vanes are changeable. God's love is constant. But his friend replied, I, I disagree with your thoughts there, Charles. You're misunderstanding the point. It's really trying to emphasize one simple truth. Regardless of which way the wind blows, God is love. Regardless of which way the wind blows, God is love. You know, that's at the same time a very simple and yet profound statement. I mean, it's a simple enough concept that even a little child can, can comprehend it and, and, and appreciate it, and yet so profound that it, it transcends our ability to fully grasp it. God is love. You know, this time of year, there, there are a lot of graduations like we have taken place in this service, whether it's from grade school or high school or, or college. And at those graduations, there's always speakers offering all sorts of tidbits of advice to the graduates to guide and motivate them in the future. But the excitement of the day can be hard to remember all of those different pieces of advice. So it's always better to focus on just one thing. That's what... That's what I want us to do today. I want us to focus on just one thing. Just take, take one thing away from God's house today. That means if you're a, a graduate who, who will be graduating today and, and moving on to the next level of your education, even if you forget everything else that you've learned here, which we certainly hope doesn't happen, it's this one thing I want you to keep first and foremost in your mind. Or if there's one thing that you get from this sermon or from, from your time with us here at Northdale Lutheran, it's just the simple truth. God is love. See, there's just one thing that you and I really need to know. Let's keep that thought in mind as we turn to our text. It's from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 11, and then verses 19 to 21. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We love because He first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And He has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. So far, the words of our text. So why spend important time like this on such a simple, basic truth that all of us know? Well, very simply, because it's also a truth that's very easy to tell. Unbelievers look at our world and very easily come to the conclusion that God couldn't possibly be loving. They conclude He has to be powerless, mean, or imaginary. 
And I guess when you look at the evidence from their perspective, it's overwhelmingly in their favor. I mean, how can God be loving when there is so much evil present in our world? So much, so much wickedness that abounds. How can a God of love allow people to, to face things like holy, AIDS, sickle cell disease, cancer, war, rape, child molestation? How can God love His people and allow them to be victims of random acts of violence or tragedies that are, are way beyond their control? You say God is a God of love and, and yet He allows people who are nice and trying their best to face challenge after challenge after challenge and, and not get ahead. How could God possibly be loving? No doubt as, as you move forward into the future, you'll face events like that. Challenges. Obstacles. Difficult times, maybe horrible times, where you are tempted to question and to doubt God's love. So this is a simple truth that we need to hear. God is love. And how do we know? Because God shows His love. God doesn't just say, I love you. God puts His love into action. He displayed His love in, in, in a way that is able to convince us for all time that His love is real and true. He sent His one and only Son into this world so that you and I might live through Him. There's a lot of things that are important for us to know. It's important to have a knowledge of history so that we can learn from the mistakes of the past and not repeat them as we go into the future. It's important to have a knowledge of math. That's just a, a core skill that is needed to be able to function in our increasingly complex world. It's good to have a knowledge of science to know the whys and the hows behind things. And all of that will help you in, in, in this line. But those aren't the most important things for us to know. What's most important for each and every one of us to know is that simple truth. God is love. God loves you and He will never stop loving you. See, God displayed His love for you in a marvelous way. He sent His only Son into this world to take on human flesh and to humble Himself in your place and mine and become obedient to death so that He could be the sacrifice that God needed as being for our sins, so that through faith in Him, you and I might live with Him. Not just now, but for all eternity. Listen, I know that's a basic truth, but it's so important for us not only to know, but to understand and to keep in front of our minds at all times. I guess what helps us to better understand God's love for us is to, to, to really know the situation that we're in by ourselves. You see, God pretty clear in what He wants of us as His children. He wants us to, to love one another. He wants us to reflect in our lives the love that He has shown to us in Jesus. Our text is pretty specific. God says, go love each other. That means God wants you to always act in the best interest of one another. That means God wants you to do for each other whatever is best for the other person regardless of the cost to yourself. He never wants you to treat anyone badly. Never wants you to say anything to or about someone else that would be harmful or, or hurtful. In fact, he even goes so far as to say he doesn't even want you to think bad thoughts or thoughts of hatred or ill will toward someone else. Boy, just a quick evaluation of our lives gives testimony to the fact that we've not been able to to love perfectly as God has loved us. Even though we know what God wants of us, even though we might desire to do what God wants of us, we have to admit we've not done it perfectly. Hard part is, much of that the world just accepts is okay. 
I mean, in our world today, speaking badly to someone or about someone, what, what we call gossip and slander, it's just accepted as commonplace. I mean, the politicians do it all the time. Why shouldn't we? Right? In our world, getting back at someone or getting even with someone or, or getting revenge with someone who harmed us or wronged us in some ways, just expected. Many live under the philosophy that it really doesn't matter what you think. As long as you keep it to yourself, that's okay. Yet God says all of that is sin. And God says even just one sin is enough to break his entire law and make us worthy of the punishment of hell. Now I know that's a basic truth. A truth that we talk about week after week after week. But that is so important for us to know. Because it's only when we come to a recognition of who we are by nature and what we deserve for our sin that we can really fully appreciate God's law. It's only by understanding what we deserve from God from our sin that we can know how God loves us even though we face challenging and, and difficult times in this world. Right? This is God's love. When we were sinners, people who rebelled against Him and deserved nothing from Him, His love led Him to give His Son for us. To suffer and die in our place. And to give that victory to us through faith. The true nature of love is to be unselfish and sacrificial. And that's exactly what we see from God. That He was unselfish and sacrificial. He provided the greatest answer to human misery there possibly is. He sent His own Son into this world to face it for us so we can live with Him forever. I truly mean that. That if you take nothing else away from what you hear here at North Hill Lutheran Church or school, that you leave certain and constant of this fact. God is love. He loves you. And that love will never stop. You see, here's the beauty. Understanding God's love helps us to understand the value and worth that we have. It helps us understand that we have value. We have worth. See, the way that this world determines value and worth is, is what you can do for someone else, what you can offer to someone else. Right? That's how value and worth is determined out of the marketplace. Yet before God, it's turned just the opposite. Your value is determined before God not by what you can offer Him, but by what He was willing to give up for you. So that God loves you, tells you you have value, you have worth. You're a somebody because you are loved by Almighty God. He was willing to give His own Son to die for you. You have value. You have worth. You see, it really isn't our continuing love for God that ought to be the central focus, but God's continuing love for us. The author Tim Keller kind of summarized this whole section in a rather neat way. He said, The gospel says that you are more sin, sinful and flawed than you dare believe, but more loved and accepted then you dare hope. God loves you, and that love will never stop. That's really all you need to know. And that's really all that you need to know, because when you know that love, it will have a natural effect on you. Once you know God's love for you in Jesus, you can't help but show that love in the way that you live. The true mark of a child of God is, is showing love to one another. You can't know the love of Jesus and not show love to other people. True children will always reflect the nature of their father. God's true children will, will love one another and will be loving toward one another. Just a natural thing, not perfectly, of course. This side of heaven will always love imperfectly. 
haltingly, sometimes weakly. But love stimulates love. God's love for us stimulates God's love in us. And it will show itself in God's love through us. Love stimulates love. And in, in, in that way, hatred is melted. Wounds are healed. Grievances forgiven. Grudges forgotten. Hopes shared. Emptiness filled. And loneliness eased in human hearts. You know, that also helps us to give up a standard by which we can measure success in life. We talk about graduation, we talk about success in life and, and in the next stages of life. And the way that this world gauges success are things like how much money can you achieve? Or how high can you climb in the corporate ladder? Or what kind of a lifestyle are you able to enjoy? Or how early can you retire? A secular education will help you in those endeavors. But as God's people, we have different goals. All of those are fine in and of themselves. We just have a different perspective on success. See, for us as God's people, the ultimate goal is heaven. And so being successful in life means finishing the race of this life in faith, knowing Jesus as our Savior and trusting Him. And so when that's your primary goal, the secondary goal for success means this. How well... Did I reflect God's love in the life that I live? How well did I love my parents and others in authority? How well did I show my love by protecting someone else's life and body? How, how well did I show love to my spouse and my children? How well did I love my neighbor by protecting their property and reputation? You see, that's our measure for success. And when that's our measure for success, the rest of it will come. God promises. Seek first His kingdom, His righteousness. All these things will be given to you as well. God is love. He loves you. And He will never stop loving you. That's both simple and profound. And I pray that, that if you leave here knowing nothing else, you always keep this fact at the very front of your mind. Don't ever doubt God's love for you. Be certain, be confident of that love as you look at that empty cross and the empty tomb. Because there God promises your sin is forgiven and heaven is yours in waiting. There God promises to walk with you as you continue the path of life, whatever path that might take toward the eternal life that is yours. There are a lot of things that are important for us to know. But really, there's just one thing that we need to know. God loves you, and He will never stop. That's just the one thing that you need to know. Please stand.